Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and today we're going to be taking a look at the crazy world of SD cards, specifically what all of these crazy numbers and symbols mean on your cards, and we're going to hopefully give you some ideas to what kind of card you need based on the device that you're plugging the card into. I think a lot of people often buy more card than they actually need, and hopefully this guide will help you make a better buying decision. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that everything you're going to see in the video I purchased with my own funds, with the exception of this Sony card here that came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these SD cards are all about. All right, so let's take a look at the two physical sizes of SD cards that you might encounter. You've got your micro SD card here and then your regular SD card. Both are pretty small, but the micro cards are a lot smaller. And depending on your device, you might choose one size over the other. The cool thing with the micro cards is that you can get an adapter. In fact, many of these cards come with an adapter. And when you put the card in the adapter, you suddenly have a full-size card too. They are completely interchangeable, which is really, really cool. So let's have a closer look at what these cards are all about. We've got the micro SD card on the right, a Samsung as an example. And then we've got our SanDisk card on the left, which is a full-size card. All of the symbols you're going to see on this larger card are the same as what you'll see on the smaller one, so this will be relevant to both. And I wanted to first focus on the card type. We have two main types right now. We have SDXC cards, and we also have SDHC cards. And the difference primarily is capacity. So SDHC can store up to 32 gigabytes maximum, whereas an SDXC card can store up to two terabytes maximum. And whether or not your device works with SDXC is something you're going to have to research on your own. Most current devices, maybe things made in the last three or four years or so, should all work with SDXC cards. But there are older cameras that don't. And you'll have to take a look at your manual and see what types of SD cards it supports because SDXC and SDHC cards look physically the same. Uh, but an XC card just won't work uh, in an older device. So be sure to take a look at your product manual or contact the manufacturer first. But again, if you bought your camera or other device in the last three or four years, it should work with both formats. And another emerging standard is the SDUC standard. And those are going to allow for cards that can go up to a whopping 128 terabytes and these cards will also deliver better performance. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, these cards aren't yet available, but when they do come out, I will certainly be reviewing them and giving you a better picture as to the differences between UC, XC, and HC. So stay tuned in the future for that. Now, there's one other difference between SD cards to be aware of, and that involves these Roman numerals that you will see on most modern cards. This is a symbol for a UHS-1 card, and in my hand here, I have one, and it might be hard to see on camera, but I've got one that's got a Roman numeral two on it. And this is a UHS-2 card. And now there are UHS-3 cards. Now what's interesting about this standard is that uh, the UHS-2 cards are faster than UHS-1 cards, but they're compatible with devices that don't support UHS-2. And let me show you the physical differences here. Uh, between a faster UHS-2 and 3 card versus the UHS-1. So on the left here, I have a UHS-2 card, and you can see that it has additional pins here uh, for data, and this, of course, will result in faster reads and writes if I have a device that will support the UHS-2 standard. But this top row of pins is in the exact same position as this UHS-1 card is. So you could take this card, because it's an SDXC card, and put it in a device that doesn't actually support the faster standard and it's still going to work. And what's cool about these UHS-2 cards is that uh, I could put this in my older Nikon DSLR, for example, and write to it at slower speeds, but then put it in my super fast UHS-2 card reader and pull those images and videos off the card faster than I would with this UHS-1 card. So even if you're a device that you're using to shoot pictures or video with, doesn't support UHS-2, uh, you can still gain some of that additional speed from your reader, and that's something to take a look at. Now, I have a reader here from SanDisk that I bought a little while back. This is their Pro Reader, 
and this is a UHS-2 reader. And the only way you're going to know it is one uh, is to check the specifications on the product listing. Uh, so here you can see this one is listed as a UHS-2 reader, and that will give me the greater speed. And at the end of the video, we're going to test a UHS-2 card so you can see how it performs when we're connecting it up with this reader. All right, so now the next thing we've got to take a look at are speed ratings. And over the years, they have developed a number of different speed ratings, and now all of them are on the cards that you'll buy today. Uh, so we're going to look at three different logos on this card that all mean the same thing. So we've got a V rating there at the top. We have a U rating here below it, and then a 10 with a circle around it next to it. What do all of those symbols mean? Well, let's take a look at this chart that the SD Card Association has put out. And all of these speed ratings refer to write speed on the cards. And write speed is important because if you have a video camera, it's going to be sending data at a very constant rate to the card. And you need to make sure that the card that you're buying can support the amount of data that your camera is going to be streaming to the card. And that's why these write ratings are really important. So if we go back to our last image here, you can see that we've got a V30, a 3, and a 10. And what does that mean? Well, we're going to start with the V30 because these V ratings indicate how much the card is rated at for sustained writes in megabytes, not megabits. And we'll talk about that distinction in a second. Uh, so this card here can sustain 30 megabytes per second in write speed. And that also happens to be the same rating you would have for the UHS speed class of three. So if you got a 3 and a V30, it's 30 megabytes per second. If you have a really fast card, like this one up here, a V90, that means you can write to the card at 90 megabytes per second. Now, the circle ratings apply to SDHC cards, but again, they're putting them on the XC cards as well sometimes, in fact, most of the time. Uh, so the circle with the 10 around it means that it can sustain a minimum of 10 megabytes per second writes. And then you can see the 6, the 4, and the 2 refer to how many megabytes per second you'll see on those cards. And you might see like some of these four and two cards sometimes get bundled in with cheap electronics that uh, need to use a memory card because if the device doesn't write at more than four megabytes per second, it doesn't need a very fast card. But if you were to take this card that's writing at four megabytes per second and stick it in your uh, Super HD camcorder that needs 30 megabytes per second, you won't get reliable video written out to the card. And speaking of video, you have to do a little bit of mathematics here to figure out exactly what your camera needs. So let me give you a good example of this. So I have a Sony 4K camera uh, that requires 100 megabits per second minimum to sustain the video that it's writing to the card. But it's important to note that this is megabits per second, not megabytes per second. And remember, our cards are being measured in megabytes per second. So what we need to do is divide that megabit number by 8. And if we take 100 and divide it by 8, we get 12.5 megabytes per second, which means a V10 card isn't going to work for us, but a V30 card, provided that card performs to where they say it will be performing, uh, will deliver the performance we need to write 4K video out all the time. And those SanDisk cards that I've got with that V30 work fine in that Sony 4K camcorder. But again, you're going to have to check your camera specifications to see what the bit rates are of that camera and then match it up with the V rating after you do that divide by 8. Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, let me know. We'll try to do a little bit more in the comments for you. Now, you're also going to see a lot of marketing thrown at you by the companies that make these cards. So the good thing is, is that if you have a card that is complying with the standard, you're going to see those symbols in common, as you can see here across three different brands. But every brand will use the other portions of the card that they have to put their own definitions out there. Uh, so, for example, this Extreme Pro card says it's going to go at 95 megabytes per second, uh, and that's probably the read speed because, remember, this one's a V30 card, and it can't write anywhere near 95 megabytes per second. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Make sure you look at that write speed rating before you buy because that is likely referring to reads. Uh, this Lexar card says it's going at 250 megabytes per second, yet its V rating is only 60, so that must also refer to the read speeds. 
Uh, spoiler alert though, when we took a look at this card, it didn't quite hit that 250 even when we were reading from it. So uh, there's often a little bit of embellishment on some of these ratings. Now one thing that Lexar does is they put in an X rating here. And what this is, is the speed comparison to an original single speed CD-ROM drive from the late 80s. That's how they measure these cards. I guess for a while, you know, we had an overlap of CD-ROM technology and SD cards, and they were measuring the speed against CD-ROMs. Kind of a pointless measurement at this point, but they keep it on all of their cards here. Uh, Sony actually gives you both the uh, projected read and write numbers on their card. And we're going to test this card in a minute to see how it stacks up to their claims. But they're saying 277 megabytes per second on reads and 150 on writes. Yet the card here is only rated as a V60. So it may not get to that full extent. And Sony also adds another symbol. This one has an M symbol and they have a higher end card that's a G. Uh, but you won't find M or G on any of the other brands. And SanDisk, for example, here might have their Extreme card and then their Extreme Pro, and they've got the Ultra, which are a little bit lower performing. So again, keep an eye on those symbols because that's really going to give you an idea as to what the write speed is going to be, which is the most important part of what you're doing with your camera. All right, so let's take a look now at the performance of this Sony card. Now remember, the speed ratings that they are putting on their card uh, are that it can handle 277 megabytes per second reading and 150 megabytes per second writing. But remember, it's only rated at V60, so sustained writes should be about 60 megabytes per second. So we're going to put it into my card reader here. Again, this is that uh, UHS-2 reader that uh, we're using from SanDisk. And once the card gets mounted, uh, we're going to take a look at the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, which measures sustained writes and reads for the purposes of shooting video. So let's have a look at that. All right, so we've had the test now running for a few minutes here, and the card is actually performing better than its V rating, but less than its marketing rating. So uh, remember, the card was rated by Sony at 277 megabytes per second on reads and 150 on writes. In our testing here, we're getting reads at around 240 megabytes per second or so, which is very good for an SD card, and about 120 megabytes per second in write. So it's actually not doing too badly here, and it's performing well within the V rating that Sony assigned to it. So I think you should get some decent performance out of it. Now again, remember, we're using a UHS-2 reader here, which could, could of course write at those UHS-2 speeds as well. If you have an older uh, reader writer, it's going to go slower. So you'll definitely want to upgrade your uh, reader if it doesn't yet support the UHS-2 standard. Now you might want to consider a high endurance SD card when you're using a dashboard camera in your car or perhaps a security camera. Anything that's going to be writing out to the card constantly will benefit from the longer lifespan of a high endurance card and that's what I would recommend for those applications. So hopefully this guide helped you understand all of the different symbols on these cards and this might actually help you save money because you don't always need the highest performing card because your camera may not require the highest performing card. But I would suggest that you go with some name brands. And the two brands I've been using the most over the years are SanDisk and Sony. I've had good luck with Samsung cards also. Uh, and the reason why I like name brand cards is because they are more reliable, first of all. Uh, they often have better warranties. As we saw with both of these cards, they far exceeded their V ratings for rights, which is very important to me as well. And I think those factors make the sometimes additional cost involved with the name brand worth it, especially if you're doing mission critical applications like doing video for a client or storing data for a project that uh, may not have a good backup while you're out in the field. Those things are important and having very reliable cards are also important. And the name brands tend to give you a better warranty as well. It should something go wrong a year or two into ownership. In fact, this Sony card here has a five-year warranty and the SanDisk warranty, I believe, is pretty long as well. So definitely look at the name brand. Even if it's gonna cost you an extra five or 10 bucks, I think it's worth it. And I've been using these SanDisk cards for the better part of 20 years. And over that entire length of time, I've only had one bad card. And that's a pretty good track record, especially given how much I am using flash memory from one day to the next. That's going to do it for now. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters. 
including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast. Tom Albrecht. Rick Vestudo. Chris Allegretta. And Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.